Over this past weekend, we seen Montez Buzelis get sent down to the Windy City Bulls G League. And uh, that was some uproar. But I'm here to let you guys know on today's episode that Montez Buzelis spending time in the G League is not that bad of an idea. And then we're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls and their matchup versus the Utah Jazz tonight. Y'all know we're going to talk about it all, break it down, but you know you got to hit the music first. Cognac, Cognac, Gang. Bulls podcast with the Cognac boys. I'm Cognac boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's daily episode. If you're tuned in for the first time, Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are returning, you want our family members here. Welcome back. Now, again, over the past, over this weekend, we've seen the Chicago Bulls send down Montez Buzelis to spend a little bit of time with the Windy City Bulls. And this right here caused a lot of Bulls fans to pretty much say, what are we doing? And have their arms up in the air when it comes to Montez Buzella is spending a little bit of time with the G League. I've heard things like, this is malpractice, or uh, why would you send him back to the G League? And that's where he's been. And I kind of was on that side of, at first, too. But then I thought about it after we've been playing so many games. It's like, the Bulls have played six games. They're three and three. And through those six games, one of them, Montez Buzella did not play in them. And then the other uh, games that were the Bulls that – the other games that the Bulls played in, Montez Buzelas is only averaging about five minutes per game. And I understand where people are coming from, but I got some type of logic to go out why I think that it's not necessarily a bad decision or a bad idea from the Chicago Bulls. As I just noted, Montez Buzelas in the last matchup that the Chicago Bulls played versus the Brooklyn Nets received a DNP. That's do not play or did not play. And if we keeping it a buck, that's not good for him. So why not try to spend some time actively playing in competitive basketball? I understand it's the G League. I understand a lot of people don't really like that. But I think that the Chicago Bulls with the position that they're in right now, you have this opportunity to utilize what you call your developmental league, which is your G League program, the Windy City Bulls, to help maximize the players that you have on this team. And if we keep it in a buck, Montez Buzelis ain't going to develop that much here without playing a lot of minutes. And with the Bulls' talent and the players that they have on the squad, you got to understand it to some degree. I know there's going to be some people that say, well, Montez Buzelis is better than X player right now. Okay. That could very well be true, but not in the eyes of the coaching staff and not in the eyes of some other Bulls fans. And I'm with Billy Donovan when he came out and pretty much said that Montez Buzelis has to earn his minutes. And I understand there's going to be some pushback and be like, well, this guy was supposed to be a top five pick, but he fell down to 11 to the Chicago Bulls. And I'm not saying that's his fault. I'm not saying it's the Chicago Bulls fault, but I'm just saying that he fell to this situation for a reason. And the Chicago Bulls are positioned right now to where they don't have to rush his development. They can allow him to become a pro and have a steady plan for himself. And when it comes to seeing those minutes, they ain't going to come to Montez Buzelis like that. You're talking about young guys who's been around in the NBA for many, many years and who you can probably push back if you want to. It's fine. But I would say, Guys that deserve more minutes than Montez Buzelis right now and Dalen Terry and Julian Phillips. Is, is he going to take minutes from those guys? I don't necessarily think, though, think that's the plan of the Chicago Bulls right now. You don't have to force Montez Buzelis into doing anything right now. You have the luxury of leaning on the guys that you have right now that already has NBA experience, the guys that have already helped you get an eclipse. Uh, a three and three record, not the best record, but definitely better than what we projected that the Bulls will be up until this point. And that right there lets me know that you can kind of take your time with Montez Buzelis. If we want Montez Buzelis to be the superstar that we believe he can be, 
it's it's you don't you don't want to stunt his growth. And stunting his growth is just constantly putting him out there for five minutes a night. You never, we have not seen Monsi Buzel is comfortable in any of those five minute slots that he's been playing in. So I would say you still utilize it. Hey, you still utilize the Windy City Bulls to go and say, hey, Montes, well, while you're down there, we need you to work on X, Y, and Z. We need to see that three point shot, get it, you know what I'm saying, be available. We need to see you you know, settle down when you want to go to your spot and attempt to take a jump shot because it was, I forgot what game it was. I'm sorry that it slipped my mind, but that was a, a moment th during the early parts of the season to where you see Montez Buzelis try to attempt to move. It was kind of slow. The dribble wasn't tight enough. And I believe he airballed the shot. This was a couple games ago, if I'm, believe, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. But I say all of that to say development is key, right? The development of Monta Buzelis should be the focus. And it's not to force him in the games, but it's to make sure that he's developing the right way. You know what I'm saying? Because we've seen the Chicago Bulls not have a choice but to play some of the younger guys. Yes, the younger guys eventually, you know, fought their way through it and became something, and, and one of those players I'm talking about is Ayo Dosumu, who really never was allowed that time to develop on his own or at his own pace. He was thrown into the fire. Guys like Lonzo went down. It was other injuries on the squad. And I'm saying Montez Buzelis doesn't have to worry about that right now. He can simply worry about being a professional, doing his damn job, and understanding his role. I think that's the – one of the most important things that came from Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan said that each player, when they enter this league, they have to find their identity. Montez has not found his identity yet. And I, I, I will agree. He's going to have to find those minutes. I mean, find or discover his identity with playing NBA minutes. But I also believe that the G League and what the Bulls plan is could potentially help him set up a solid foundation. And what does that solid foundation include? Hard work, effort, IQ, knowledge, things like that. That's going to help him. Because if we're talking about other things that Billy Donovan has said to add on to the different layers of this conversation, one of the most important things that I took out from this is Billy Donovan said that it's going – Montez is going to make mistakes, but he's got to be aggressive making those mistakes. And I don't want to come into a situation where I'm looking at another Patrick Williams. I'm not saying Patrick Williams is 100% terrible, but Patrick Williams has a problem. In my mind, you speak for yourself, but in my mind, Patrick Williams lacks that aggressiveness that is necessary for him to establish himself consistently based on what has transpired throughout his career. We're talking about injuries. We're talking about development. We're talking about understanding what is required from the coaching staff, et cetera, et cetera. And he's kind of, he carved himself out to be a pretty decent player, but he kind of fell short to the expectations. So allow Montez Buzelis to take his time with this, develop himself, and then when it's time to go, leave no question. Leave no question. So it's not all bad to send him down to the G League. It's not all bad because he's going to get a number of reps down there. They're going to obviously call him back. We just talked about them, that they sent them down and they called them back so he can be around the team. So you could just expect this to be a continuing thing. He needs the reps. It ain't going to be too many reps being given out with five minutes per game. And if you find yourself in a matchup going back and forth, nip and tuck with like another Brooklyn Nets per se coming up, you can expect Montez Buzelis not to play many minutes in that game unless he's doing something that's impactful to the game. Not just being out there. Just being out there. Is that really development? For him just being out there, standing out there, some people will say, and this is it's, it's, it's no pushback for me if you say, hey, just allow him out there so he can get a, a feel of the game. Cool. But do you want just do you just want a guy out there filling the game? No, you want a guy out there that has a feel of the game, but also has the IQ and the want to be aggressive to do more and impact the game defensively, offensively, 
in anywhere else you can fill in, not just necessarily having a feel of the game. Before we move on, just look at this. Dalen Terry, he started off from ground zero, worked his way up, and then, you know, still not really seeming like he has a feel of the game. He was giving him minutes. Got some minutes. A lot of after time and time and time, spending time with the G League and the main squad, you seen last season, the second half of the season, Dale and Terry not only have a good feel for the game, but now he became impactful to the game. If you look at the box score, you're going to say, well, Bobby, his stats are terrible. No, they are terrible. But if you look at the impact during the game, actually take the time out and look at the impact during the game. There is a number of things that Dale and Terry has been doing for this squad, especially on a defensive end and the playmaking side of the offensive side. So allow Montez Buzelis to grow and find his identity. Dalen Terry appears to have found his after having to grind and work and, and earn his minutes. Allow Montez to grind and work and earn his minutes, discover himself and see what his identity will be, and then we shall see him thrive like we're seeing a Julian Phillips thrive, like we're seeing a Dalen Terry starting to come around. Allow Montez Buzelis to have some time. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world by sending a rookie early in his career down for a game in the G League, and then you're just going to bring him back up. It's not the end of the world. But now on to tonight's matchup for uh, the Bulls versus the Jazz. The Bulls. Y'all drop one versus the, 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 the Brooklyn Nets, and I don't even know how. But, hey, it's the NBA. Sometimes you're going to lose those games that you're supposed to win. Bulls lost those, lost that game when I thought that they could have really, really uh, eked out that win, and but they didn't, and they dropped one. But now you're going up against a Utah Jazz team that is 0-6. 0-6. The Chicago Bulls are facing that team that, that is winless. And they might be coming in with some pride. They might be coming in to take a win. And the Chicago Bulls can't allow that to happen. You got to start this game fast. And you got to absolutely put the score on this Jazz team. Like, as you know what I'm saying? Though the record is 0-6, they still got some guys over there that could potentially put the ball in the bucket enough to pull out a win versus this team if the team ain't right. These guys are 0-6. We're talking about the Utah Jazz. They played six games. Out of those six games, they've been blown out four times. They've been blown out four times in just six games. Guys, Chicago Bulls, please don't make this Monday night a, 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 a nightmare for us Chicago sports fans right now because we are not doing great. If, we, uh, if you are Chicago Bears fans, you're not doing great right now. And uh, the Chicago Bulls, we already, already up, kind of already up in arms with the squad. We don't know where we're going to go with this squad, but please, don't lose to the 0-6 Utah Jazz. Don't lose to the 0-6 Utah Jazz. Y'all got to come in this and absolutely handle business. Not business, business. Handle your business. I think the Bulls, are, they have way more talent than this team. They are better than this team, but the thing is, is that the Bulls, number one, they have to take care of the basketball, and they have to start fast. If you do one of those things, you should be edging out a victory tonight. But we shall see. If you're asking me what my, my prediction is, I got the Chicago Bulls with a win tonight after definitely letting go one versus the Brooklyn Nets. I think the Chicago Bulls bounce back and use last the last game as a reminder we got to come out here and hoop and take care of business. Now, that's up to them to see what they're going to do. They could very well come out and still start the game off rough and pull it out. But I hope that they start this game off well and pull it out. You know what I'm saying? So we shall see what happens with the Bulls versus Utah Jazz tonight. I'm going with a Bulls win. You let me know your prediction down below. But that is it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know how you're feeling about the Montez Buzelis thing. Do you feel like that is good for Montez Buzelis to spend a little bit of time at the G League? I say it's not a bad idea. You let me know what you think down below and drop your your, your game predictions tonight for the for, for the Bulls versus the Jazz. That is it for me today. Make sure you hit the like button. 
hit the subscribe button. If you want to call in and be a part of the mailbag episode, call in, state your name, leave your tape. The number is down in the, in the description. And if you're listening, the number to do so is 773-242-9219. Thank y'all so much. Make sure you always see red because we already down bad and the Bears are down bad. But I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Appreciate y'all. Cognac. Cognac. Gang.